Hey guys, so behind me I have the Landini Legend 130 and uh, it developed a rust problem so we're going to treat the rust and then we're going to repaint the tractor. I know it looks pretty bad but I've used this rust converter and you paint it on with a brush after you clean down the metal and uh, that tries to get in and it actually eats into the rust and converts it. So we're going to, uh, I left this I think 24 hours now because it wasn't the best yesterday for painting but uh, it's all clean now. We're going to give it a, just a quick wipe over and then we're going to get ready for primer. Okay, so I have it all taped off. So why am I painting this tractor? Well, obviously you can see all the little holes of rust just starting to appear. They're only bubble rust, but this is the big patches just up here on top of the mud guard. So yeah, they were uh, fairly bad. So I cleaned them all down with sandpaper and uh, this one seemed to grow and grow. So I used that rust converter on these two here and basically on everything else and then give everything a wash with degreaser or with water first of all, then degreaser, then cleaned it, then dried it. Now I taped it all off, which seemed to take an eternity to tape off. Something that looked quite simple, but it's taped off on both sides. I don't need to tape the steps. Taped all the way around. I'm only doing the back half of the tractor anyway. So that's now ready to go. I have the other side still to do, so let's do that. Okay, so I now have both back sides done. And now I have this side all done as well. Okay, so you can see all of them are nice and shiny. All the way down. Okay, now I have it taped off on both sides. It's all nice and shiny, it's all clean, it's all degreased, and it's perfect, ready to be painted. I'm gonna hit it so with some primer first, and then paint afterwards. So the paint I'm using is a Tractol primer paint. You can see it in there. I've hit it with a little bit of paint thinner as well to make it uh, runny enough to go through the gun. Give it a nice little uh, swirl up. There's not too much in it because it's about that much there, and I don't need very much. The gun I'm using is a bottom fill uh, gun, so that I use that for the primer, and then I use the top fill one for the paint. Okay guys, so I'm about to start spraying, but don't forget the PPE. Okay, so not the easiest thing to do is spray and fill them. Okay, we'll let that flash off, and when that's dry, we'll hit it with another layer. Okay, that's it now, all done. So as you can see, I had one little run just there. There was nothing I could do about it. I tried to spray it out, but it wouldn't work, so I just had to sand it out afterwards. But uh, it'll have to be okay because the paint will still stick to it. All right, that looks pretty good the whole way around. I've given it a quick sand just to pull any of that roughness back off it. But um, yeah, I'm pretty happy how it turned out. Okay, let's have a look at the big hole that was there. Looks pretty good, so I've given everything a light sand with 500 grit sandpaper and then just a quick um, buff off. So you can see that the metal is damaged there. I don't think there's anything I can do about it unless I literally get a body filler and fill it, but I'm not going to do that. It is a tractor after all, but I think overall, I'm really happy how it turned out. So when the paint goes on, hopefully it'll be another layer on top and it'll level it out. Otherwise I can give it another sand before painting it and that'll hopefully flatten everything as well. And just scrolling down here, you can still see some of the damage in it, but um, I think that damage has literally gone into the metalwork. There's nothing I can do about that. But hopefully with the rust converter, it'll hopefully have um, killed any of that rust that's in there and uh, brought it back to good metal. I did give everything good sand as well, so hopefully that also will uh, get rid of any rust. But overall, I'm really happy with the results. Booyah! So that's now all painted up, really happy with the results. It's still in grey primer, that still has to get blue paint on top. But I'm not going to do that today, unfortunately the temperatures have just dropped. Although it hasn't gotten windy at all, uh, there's just no heat in the day. And I don't, I think maybe 24 hours for that to go properly hard. Or at least definitely a good sunny day, so maybe tomorrow. Um, the weather looks pretty good for tomorrow, so that'll be painted, hopefully. Um, not sure about the front. That still is debatable whether it needs to be done or not. I do have a lot of holes here, 
same on the far side there's just ones just across here and i think there's a big one up here so um i don't think i'm going to be able to really just do individual bits so i probably will have to paint the whole thing i'm going to try and not go near any of the stickers um i don't have replacement stickers the next day okay now at the front of the tractor this is the front grill and uh you can see there's a big crack here and there's a corresponding crack here so i actually have no idea how to bond this because i thought originally it was going to use fiberglass but you can see it's a different type of fiberglass that's in it it's kind of like a, a powder that's nearly like a set rather than actually fiberglass so what i'm thinking of doing and i don't know whether this is right or not but i'm going to take the hand grinder cut a slit down here but not go all the way through do a corresponding slit here Put in a piece of the filler rod from the MIG welder into it and then fiberglass over it. So it'll have the strength of the metal but it'll be bonded in with the fiberglass. And um, I'm not really sure how else to do it because if I just did fiberglass straight, that's going to sit there but it could easily crack again. And I'm not sure whether anything is really going to grip to hold it together. Um, I think this might be the easiest way of doing it. Okay, so three sits later. So you have to join those two together. Hold them like that, put the slits into it, and uh, the wire seems to be slotting in pretty okay, and that'll obviously join into there. I'm gonna fiberglass it, that in. Okay, so this is what I've done. I've cut a load of slits into it, used the filler rod from the MIG welder, made up some resin, and uh, just filled it. So I'm gonna let that cure, and when that's fully cured, I'm just going to then so obviously gravity is pulling it down, so then when it's cured, I'm going to clean it up at the top, put a little bit more, fiberglass this one, and maybe a piece here, and uh, then fiberglass the whole way around as well. And obviously then I have to do the far side, but this was the biggest one. And um, I'm actually really happy how it's turning out. It looks really well. So I have the vice grip just holding everything together in place. So um, when that's cured, we'll do some more. So that's how it looks now, all cured. We'll give it a sand. And I've done this side here as well, just run three slots into it and then the MIG wire into it again. And uh, yep, yeah, that's all cured. So I'm probably not sure whether I'll give it a bondo or um, do some more fiberglass or just some resin now on top of it as well. Okay, now after a quick sand, on to body filler. Now we take some body filler, about, uh, about that much, and uh, we put some hardener into it. So as everyone knows, it's a golf ball of filler to a P of hardener. So then we are going to mix these two up and, um, and get ready to put it on. So we're going to mix these two together. Can't do this one-handed. Okay, and it's all mixed up, so now time to apply it. Okay, so obviously normally you wouldn't fill them and apply it at the same time, but we're going to that, so that's all the holes there now. So what we're doing is we're just filling up all of the gaps, but we're keeping it moving so we're never getting a big layer. And um, yeah, it's looking pretty well. Okay, I'm going to do the rest of it off camera. Okay, that's the first layer of body filler now on it. So it's only roughly put onto it, but I have good coverage everywhere. And we check this side here, it's pretty good. And I actually have a little piece I did here as well. So that's all doing uh, pretty well. It's just drying there now, we're curing. You can still feel the heat of it. So we are going to wait until it's probably cured. I left it very lightly. There probably should have been a little bit more pink in the body filler, but um, I wanted quite a long work time because I knew these slits, what happens is when you put them in, put the body filler into it, it formed little air pockets and then they bubble up. So I had to go over a few times to kind of force the air out. And um, yeah, it's stuff that doesn't really want to be overly worked. But uh, yeah. It's dry now, now anyway, and uh, we'll be ready to sand it now in a few minutes. Okay guys, so that's now the first layer of body filler on it. So, I have it all covered. It looks pretty well. Now there's a few little ups and downs in it. 
So they will be sanded out and then I'll put a second layer onto it just to smoothen it out. Okay, so that's it now all sanded back with the first layer of body filler on it. And uh, all the corners and everything are looking perfect. I'm just going to give it another layer of body filler just in, to uh, flatten out all the little holes and uh, bring everything up to the same level. But overall, I'm really happy how it looks. Brilliant. Okay, and that's now another layer on. So that's the second layer of body filler on. All right, guys, let's have a look at how it turned out. So it is currently in primer. It's sitting in the sun, drying, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much dry. So I think the crack was somewhere about here, and uh, pretty much impossible to know where it is. There's the second crack, which was here. So you wouldn't actually notice that there is a crack here, big crack just up here, and there's actually one down here as well that I fixed. It's a big slice there. Maybe a little bit more noticeable, but when the whole tractor's painted and you see it from a distance, you're not gonna know it anyway. But really happy how it turned out. Okay, now I have the tractor all in primer, we're ready for paint. So the big question is, what color am I gonna paint it? Okay, so I mixed up my paint. I'll just use a screwdriver just to give it a stir. There's a little bit of thinner in there as well to make it flow through the gun. Right. Okay, let's get ready to paint. So guys, I'm about to start spraying, but don't forget your PPE. Okay, I'm not sure if you can hear me with the mask, but we're about to paint. Think of that that looks absolutely deadly so it is as close as i can get to the right shade of paint now remember the paint is going to be 20 years of age so it's going to look slightly different than original but uh yeah very happy with that so that's the original paint that's the new paint and to my eye they're pretty much identical so i still have to paint the bonnet but it looks absolutely brilliant love the color love how it's turning out the tractor looks amazing, all with the same colour, no patches of rust. So that's the two sides done. I've done all along here and across the front as well. And looking at the back, it's so glossy and so clean. Like, there's not a single rust hole anywhere. It looks amazing, absolutely amazing. All the same colour. So let's have a look at the big hole. I was up here so you can still see a little bit of damage that's just the damage inside the metalwork but there's nothing we can do about that but it looks brilliant apps i'm so delighted with it ta-da so what do you guys think of that so that's now the tractor all painted up i'm really happy how it turned out it looks amazing in the sunshine still curing away so i have it in the sunshine to help uh, the paint to cure a bit better and to Hard enough, and I the bonnet of course painted as well. So it still looks a little bit weird because everything is painted blue. So obviously you take off all the, the paper and it'll harden off. But I'm really, I don't want to pull the paper off just yet because the paint is still soft. And if I pull it off, I could pull some of the paint with it. So I'm going to totally let the paint harden off and then I'll pull off all the paper afterwards. So I just want to have a look at where I did the fix. Uh, I think it's somewhere about here. That turned out really well, so you can't even see where it is. And then on this side here, there's three little bars I put into it here and painted over and fillered it over and everything. So it looks really well. You can't actually tell where it is. And of course there's one underneath as well. I didn't film it, but it's also just blended into everything else and it. it's, uh, you can't see it. But really, really happy how that turned out. And the great thing is, that paint was not expensive, so uh, I used one tin of primer and two tins of paint. And I didn't even use all the, the blue paint, so I had to use, there's still paint left over for the wings. Okay, now let's paint the side panels.
have all the side panels set up. Now time to lay down some paint. The best bit is ripping off the newspapers. Now time to remove all the paper from the grill. And now the reveal. That's in the bag. I absolutely love it. I've got all the sides on, all painted up. Looks amazing. I'm really impressed how well it's done. 